Hi, this is Melly with 25 and 52. I'm going to talk today about this Angelina Jolie uh, preventative mastectomy thing. <laughs> so anyway, um, I read her, uh, I read Angelina Jolie's editorial, or opinion piece, opinion piece in uh, the, on Tuesday morning when I woke up. And it struck a few nerves, um, first of all, because I just freak out a little bit every time I read something about, not every time I read something about breast cancer, but many times when I read something about breast cancer, it runs in my family, my mom had breast cancer, you know, that whole thing. Um, and I have a lot of emotions wrapped up in, um, in it and preventive testing, that sort of thing. <sighs> So, you know, it makes sense that I'd react to this pretty strongly. I read the piece, I forget a little bit, and then, you know, I process it, read other articles about it, and about what people think of her brave decision, or how she shouldn't have done this thing, whatever. You know what, this is a woman she, who wanted to just talk about her healthcare experiences. Cool. Good game. Um, one of the reasons I liked the editorial to begin with is that it felt sort of like the opposite of the whole super sexualized save the tatas ha type of breast cancer dialogue that sometimes happens um and as part of awareness raising think everyone's aware of breast cancer by now that's not the point this opinion piece is actually one of the few ways i feel furthers awareness of what making these difficult health choices can actually be like and why people might do that um, a lot of people are concerned that women are going to call their doctors and ask for the test even if they shouldn't have it, and then ask for the surgery even if they shouldn't have it. And I'm like, that's... Then it's the doctor's place to tell them no. It's not Angelina Jolie's responsibility if people go ask their doctors questions about a treatment she had. Now, some people have judged her for not focusing enough on healthcare access issues, which especially um, considering the breast, the breast cancer gene test, the BRCA1 and 2 test, cost $3,000 or $4,000 without insurance. Um, and when they are covered with insurance frequently, they still cost a few hundred dollars. Anyway, these tests are ridiculously expensive. Um, and, you know, not even getting into the treatments, the surgeries, all that. But the reason the tests are expensive is because the price is artificially inflated because those genes are patented. Those genes are patented because uh, the company that um, holds the intellectual property behind the test, uh, it's called Myriad Genetics, I've included some links in the description there. Sorry, they uh, claim that they have patents on the genes themselves as opposed to the testing method. It's been overturned in courts and then they appealed and now it's at the Supreme Court. It's been the hearing's been going on there for a few weeks, and I just, it, it hinges on the idea that isolated DNA and DNA in the body are, do not count as the same thing. So, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't think it stands, I don't think it should stand. I don't think you should be able to patent a gene that naturally occurs in people's bodies. It makes me angry. <laughs> All right, so, so far we've concluded that these genes are patented um, because isolated DNA is considered separate from DNA inside the person, which is ridiculous because you know what isolated DNA is? You, you, you know, take a sample, you separate the DNA out from the everything else using some fancy chemicals and stuff. And then you literally make copies of the DNA. You know, it's got those two strands, right? You unpeel them and stick new stuff to them to make extra copies. It's literally copying what is in these, these DNA sequences in, our, in all of our cells. The same as our cells are doing <laughs> themselves every minute, every day. This should not be patentable. Full stop. Since you closed with a story about your grandmother, I'm going to close with a story about mine. Uh, this is a story that you, Casey, know already, though. Um, it's actually when, when you met her. Um, so Casey was visiting me um, 
when I lived with my parents. And she was already working at the abortion clinic at that time. So, you know, after some shifty eyes of, is she okay with this? There's this 84-year-old lady. So, yep, yep, she's she's fine. My grandma goes, oh, I'm so proud. You know, basically just being very happy that this is what she did, you know. And then we have dinner with my family. It's great. And then at the end, uh, my grandma turns to Casey and goes, remember, women first. And, you know, I I think she's going to remember. But that's that's what I think about now when I think about uh, you and um, passing down, you know, information and family stuff through the generations.